Okay, we are live. Good morning, and at this time, will sergeants please start their recording? PC recording has started. According to the clouds, all set. Thank you. Backup is ready. Thank you, and Sergeant Polite, if you'd be able to start with your opening statement. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to the remote hearing on cultural affairs, libraries, and international group relations. We're all council members and staff, please turn on their videos at this time. Thank you. To minimize disruptions, please place all cell phones, electronics to vibrate. Chair, we are ready to begin. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's hearing. I'm council member Jimmy Van Bramer, chair of the Committee on Cultural Affairs, Libraries, and International Intergroup Relations, and we are now in session. Today, the committee will be voting on two important bills, uh, and I'm thrilled that we're joined by uh, the entire committee this morning, uh, Majority Leader Cumbo, uh, Council Member Mark Joni, Council Member Joe Borelli, and Council Member Francisco Moya. Uh, the first of the two bills is intro 2034A, uh, related to coordinating the use of open space for art and cultural programming, sponsored by our colleague, Majority Leader Cumbo, and I am proud to be a co-sponsor of that legislation. Secondly, intro 2068A, or Open Culture, as we've been calling it, uh, which I'm proud to be the lead sponsor on, uh, is related to the temporary use of outdoor space for artistic and cultural events. Uh, before I defer to Majority Leader Cumbo for a statement on her bill, I just want to say that I would like to thank uh, all of my colleagues, as well as the cultural community, and the artists and advocates uh, for their tireless efforts and partnership in responding to the crisis that our community's art and cultural sector has been experiencing this year. 2020 has seen uh, the worst pandemic in our lifetimes for sure. Uh, but as we all know, while culturals have never truly closed, the hard truth of the matter is that cities art and cultural institutions were among the first uh, to be forced to close their doors, particularly performing arts venues of all kinds. And it has been a difficult road. Uh, we've lost at least 260,000 cultural sector jobs in the last nine months. Just think about that for a second. Uh, they need uh, these bills to pass. The cultural community and culturals are a major contributor not only to our economy, but to the heart and soul of the city. When you think of this city, uh, the iconic images uh, and the moments that New Yorkers come to value and remember, it's often art and culture in communities, in the neighborhoods where they live, uh, which brings the greatest joy. And culturals, well being the life uh, of our city, uh, have been fighting resiliently uh, to survive this moment, uh, even with limited reopenings and performances that we've seen over the last several months. Uh, but artists, venues, and institutions, many of which are small businesses themselves, of course, are in dire financial circumstances. Uh, many have closed, many more are at risk of closing. And that's why it's so important that we pass these bills today and why we introduced open culture. Open culture responds to the crisis directly by allowing eligible art and cultural institutions and others uh, to be approved for use of open space. And uh, I just want to say that uh, 2068A is not just a cultural bill, it's a small business bill. It's a jobs creation bill. It's all of those things in one, creating uh, a one-stop shop for expedited permits uh, that allows for donation-based and paid ticketed events, allowing cultural organizations and artists, including individual artists, uh, to charge for those performances and actually start to receive income for the art that they create and produce once again. Uh, and this will be in conjunction with SAPO and DOT opening up uh, open streets uh, and other areas in consultation with local council members, which is a really important uh, piece of the bill that's been added 
Um, and uh, there are thousands of arts organizations, individual artists uh, that are available to participate, but also uh, non-DCLA funded organizations can and will be able to access this program as long as they partner with any one of the 2000 arts organizations and individual artists, including the five borough arts councils. So uh, virtually everyone uh, can access this program and start performing uh, as early as March 1st, uh, as we get this program up and running. And uh, it is uh, incredibly exciting to be able to have dance, music, uh, poetry, uh, opera, uh, comedy, breaking out literally uh, all over the city of New York in the streets as the weather uh, gets a little bit nicer. We hope uh, uh, for the best with COVID, but uh, we are going to save a lot of arts organizations and put to work a lot of artists and allow them to get paid for their work because the days of performing for free all the time uh, have got to be over. Artists deserve to get paid for their performances and their work and this allows for that to happen. So uh, I wanna thank uh, everyone in the community for working with us. I wanna thank Majority Leader Cumbo for uh, her support of this bill and also for her additional intro, which she'll talk about in a moment. Um, and I wanna thank my legislative director, Jack Bernadovitz, uh, who worked incredibly hard on this piece of legislation. It's his first uh, piece of legislation that he has seen through from beginning to end. Uh, my chief of staff, Matt Wallace, uh, our committee's principal financial analyst, Alia Ali, our policy analyst, Christy Dwyer, and our committee counsel, Brenda McKinney, who I know worked incredibly hard on this piece of legislation um, and worked uh, back and forth and back and forth multiple times. So we're very excited uh, for this day, uh, very excited about this bill, and to hear more about her incredibly important bill, uh, intro 2034A, I would like to uh, invite Council uh, Majority Leader Cumbo to say a few words. Majority Leader, can you hear us? I can hear you now. Great. You ready for me? We are ready for you. Hello? Yep. And can ready. you hear me? Yes. Okay, we can perfect. Hear you. Good morning and good morning to the entire committee today. This morning, I'm so happy to be here with all of you and to our committee counsel, Brenda McKinney, who has worked tirelessly throughout this entire pandemic to make our legislative visions a reality. Over the set past seven months, COVID-19 has impacted every sector within our city's economic structure with arts and culture being one of the hardest hit. Prior to the pandemic, the cultural sector in New York City was one of the largest industries in New York City, employing nearly 400,000 workers, paying them $31 billion in wages and generating $110 billion in economic activity. Yes, we are talking about the lifeline of New York City, the heart and soul, of our cultural economy. In merely seven months, employment within this sector has fallen over 60% with 95% of organizations being forced to cancel some programming. In light of the obstacles our cultural sector is facing, it is critical that we meet this moment by passing intro 2034 in the spirit of innovation and progressing towards a reimagined approach to how we enjoy arts and culture in New York City and beyond. Intro 2034 will require the coordination of relevant city agencies to create a mobile application that will provide information about and coordinate the use of open space for art and cultural programming, as well as providing information about low cost or free public programs in such locations. We have seen firsthand the success of opening public spaces for entertainment purposes, most especially with the use of open streets for our restaurant industry. Now it is time that we rise to the occasion and provide public spaces for performance so that every New Yorker can enjoy the rich and diverse cultural enrichment that our city has to offer in a socially distant setting. And I just wanna conclude by saying, these are only first steps towards many that we are discussing and planning to make sure that the cultural economy comes back to New York in an incredible and amazing way. There's so much work that needs to be done. We've been hearing you, we are listening, and we are working towards solution. This is simply a, a first step towards that movement. 
I also want to add that I want to thank at this time Speaker Corey Johnson, um, as well as Jason Goldman, who have worked incredibly hard on this. Um, during a pandemic with there being so much need in the city of New York, I applaud them for recognizing that we can lift up the city of New York and support the cultural community at the same time. It is possible and that we have to make sure that we bring back the arts and cultural community. I wanna thank also my legislative director, Jason Herr, as well as Alicia Mercedes, my communications director and Tasha Young, my chief of staff. So I thank all of you today for being on this hearing. Um, We've got a lot of work to do, but we are moving in the right direction. And thank you so much, Chair Jimmy Van Bramer, for hosting uh, and organizing this particular hearing. Thank you very much, uh, Majority Leader Cumbo. And if there are no other comments from members of the committee, I would now like to ask Billy to call the roll for vote on both intro 2034A and intro 2068A. Good morning, <clears throat> excuse me. Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on cultural affairs. Both items are coupled. Chair Van Bramer. I vote aye. Combo. I vote aye. Joe Nye. Aye. Moya. I vote aye. Borelli. I vote aye. By a vote of five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, both items have been adopted by the committee. Thank you. Thank you very much to everyone. Uh, uh, congratulations to everyone. And with that, this hearing of the Cultural Affairs, Libraries, and International Intergroup Relations Committee uh, hearing uh, is adjourned.